Okay. okay, good evening, everybody. Uh, sorry for the delay. We were in executive session um, to discuss strategies with a whole bunch of things that we can't talk about in public, so we just broke from there, and here we are. So uh, sorry that we're running significantly late. I assure you I will do my best to get us back on agenda. Uh, first of all, we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Public forum. Uh, residents are invited to share ideas, opinions, or ask questions regarding town government. Is there anyone here that wants to say anything in public forum? Seeing none. Uh, staff recognition. The select board will recognize Tony Alexander, senior library assistant, who is retiring, retiring, uh, um, with 31 years of service to the town. Hi, Maria. Good, good evening. <coughs> Where's Tony? So on, um, on behalf of Heather, who couldn't be here tonight, the library director, as well as Tony, who could not be here tonight. Um, um, Mar Margie is here from the trustees, and I'm here on behalf of Tony to accept her congratulations. Okay. So I've known Tony for the vast majority of my life. She is an absolutely an awesome person, a great asset to the town, and the town will severely miss having her around. I know that she is uh, that first smiling face when you come into the library, and um, absolutely awesome. I'm, I'm very, very sad that she isn't here for me to throw my accolades at her. I know it would make her feel very uncomfortable, which makes me want to throw more accolades at her. <laughs> so uh, I would give a heartfelt congratulations uh, from me personally, from the board, and from the town. Uh, thank you very much for 31 years of her service, and uh, she will be very greatly missed, and it would be very hard to replace her. All right? Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank Tell her you. I'm very angry that she isn't here for me to embarrass her. <laughs> we'll I'm sure her. you'll see her. Yeah. Yes. You have opportunities to do that another time. Great. Uh, Girl Scout Troop number 684, I'm sorry, 68243, Silver Award Project Presentation. Four eighth grade cadets, Eva Papalardo, Sabrina Russo, did I say that right? Okay, great, thank you. Charlotte Schuster and Holly Thompson will present their Silver Award project to the select board. The project focuses on fostering an attitude of gratitude at the middle school in their community. A big part of their project will be offering several workshops in the children's room at the Hopkins and Public Library. Alyssa Thompson is the Girl Scout leader. Good evening, girls, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. How do you guys feel sitting here on TV talking in front of hundreds and thousands of people? <laughs> <laughs> um, so welcome. Thank you, Thank you very you. much. So Alyssa, you're the lead on this. Um, why don't you, is it, oh, oh, you're Alyssa. All right. I thought I could hide through this. I'm not saying that you don't look like you're a Girl Scout, but... <laughs> Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about it, uh, a quick little intro, and then we'll let the girls tell us. Absolutely. This process all started last year, actually. The Silver Award Project is a, it's just a fantastic opportunity to, for the girls to get together and make a difference. And we started discussions of this last spring, um, trying to figure out what would be viable. We had some interviews with various people and discovered that it was a project that we really wanted to um, take on and they have a lot to tell you. So the attitude of gratitude has been something I think that's really started to take shape. Awesome. Thank you so much for having them. You're welcome, thank you. So you will see what you see on the TV is what the people at home see. So know that when you're doing your thing, I'm gonna be making faces at you and trying to make you smile and make you laugh. <laughs> so, uh, but welcome. Uh, please go ahead and tell us a little bit about what's, uh, what's going on. I'm Holly. I'm Ava. I'm Charlotte. Okay. We are Hopkinson Girl Scout, 8th grade cadet Girl Scout shoot 68243. Thank you very much for this opportunity to share our Silver Award project and attitude of gratitude. Our goal in this project is to teach the Hopkins community about physical and emotional benefits of having a grateful heart. With special attention given to the Hopkins Middle School and working with the young children 
ten children at the Hopkins Public Library, gratitude really makes us more happy with everything we have. Gratitude is an amazing property of the human mind. The more gratitude we feel, the happier we'll be. Gratitude helps us to reduce stress and increase productivity. It makes us feel much better about ourselves and others. But one of our very first thoughts in our project was how. How could one positive emotion impact our lives so greatly? It all starts with one powerful chemical called oxytocin, also known as one of the happiness hormones. This hormone can be triggered naturally through being with friends, family, playing sports, and lots more. One main thing that triggers oxytocin is gratitude. When participating in grateful activities, such as writing consistently in gratitude journals and making gratitude rocks, our relaxation levels increase dramatically. We become more energized and our sleep quality even increases. But the key to a grateful heart lies in the repetition. The more we show our gratitude, the more grateful we will be. To work towards our project's goals, we did some online research. We then met with psychologists Elizabeth Daniels and Kim Manning last spring in their Hopkinton offices to learn all about the positive effects of gratitude and created the trifold you see here to help us share about our subject. Next we went, met with Ms. Ben Benick, assistant principal and Ms. Grady, eighth grade English teacher and gratitude guru at Hopkinton Middle School to determine the best ways to deliver our message to the school. Since then, we set up a table at back to school night, constructed flyers with gratitude facts, and posted them throughout the middle school. The, and the art department contributed beautiful student art to the gratitude theme display in the main lobby. Most recently, the guidance department allowed us to contribute to Random Acts of Kindness Week by making and distributing 1,000 inspirational sticky notes for school lockers, creating gifts and gratitude bookmarks for English teachers and their students, and hosting an educational table where students and teachers wrote 70 thank you notes to the office staff, school nurses, and custodial and cafeteria staff. We have had many opportunities to reach the Hoppington community about our message about gratitude. We created gratitude rocks with fun sayings, and at the annual Girl Scout Fall Sing, we had children decorate them. These rocks help, pe help to remind people to think about a few things they are grateful for each day. Thanks to the hospitality of the Hoppington Public Library, we are allowed to display our project in the lobby there and held gratitude-filled raffles, which we have since distributed to three lucky residents. At Caroling on the Common, we displayed our project and sold gratitude ornaments. On Martin Luther King Day, we hosted, hosted a table where people could write thank you notes to give to friends, families, and teachers. We also talked about how wonderful the respite center is and gave people the opportunity to leave them thank you notes as well. We have many gratitude projects to come. We are happy to say that we will host workshops at the Hopkinton Public Library on these three dates, March 16th, 23rd, and 30th, for grades K through 5 from 3.30 to 4.30 upstairs in the children's room. We will work with the kids to show them how gratitude works and how they can use it in their lives. We will, we will do activities like crafts with gratitude rocks, gratitude journals, thank you cards, and fun books they can read. We are excited to host a table at HMS March 20th, Rise Up Day, with information on the respite center for which our troop is especially thankful for. We plan to make a permanent appreciation station at the middle school where kids can write to their friends or teachers and also hope to make an online gratitude journal with gratitude prompts that kids can write in and reflect every day. We are trying to make a sustainable project that can stick with people in this community. Thank you for listening, and I hope everyone can incorporate gratitude into their everyday lives. We have a poster we'd like to share with you, some of our favorite parts of this project, and we can answer questions now. That's awesome. Very nicely done, girls. Very nicely done. Thank you. Um, Mary Jo, why don't you start us off? Okay. Well, I want to congratulate you, and particularly with the theme, attitude is, and gratitude. We need a lot more of that right now. Uh, I was going to ask you, what are you doing with your posters after today? Uh, we display many of our posters at the Hopkinton Middle School, which is where we go to school, along with um, some beautiful art displays completed by um, students at the school. We, we have elections right now, and we have people coming in and out of the town hall every day and for another week. Of, uh, and I would love to see you put them in the front hall, here at town hall, for a week. And then you can take them to the school. Would that be okay? Yes, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> awesome. And that is all right with you. We can put them down there. 
I do believe we make the rules, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, and in fact, through, through the chair, I also want to take this opportunity to thank you for coming to town hall. I remember when I came in contact with you on MLK Day and extended the invitation for you to come before the board, and I told you everything will be fine. So far, you've done fantastically well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to when I come in and work at, work at the polls to seeing them as they go by and taking a look at them. And I, and I think the citizens of Hoppington for the early voting would like to do that too. So I, I thank you for allowing us to have them for a few days. Yeah. And then you can come and get them and take them. <laughs> uh, but congratulations. It's a very timely subject. And uh, I think you're doing a wonderful job. Thank you, girls. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. I'm, a, I'm in complete agreement with everything that Mary Jo just said. I would love to see this in town hall, but I'll tell you what really warms my heart about this is today with social media and the mean streak that you see in kids, you guys, you girls have, have come forward and said, let's, let's be positive and let's be thankful for things. And that, that warms my heart. That tells me that our youth is still in in good shape and you're looking positively towards things. So I think this is fantastic. I think it's a, it's a good thing to wake up every day and remind yourself of what are you happy about. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yep. So uh, both my colleagues, I will echo their sentiments. Uh, it's not easy to come up and sit in front of a microphone. Maybe it is for you guys. I don't think it is for most kids your age uh, to sit and talk and be on camera and just sit there with your smiles the whole time. It, it's a wonderful thing to see you guys and, and you did a great job and the project was wonderful. Um, and so kudos go to you, but kudos also go to your parents. So your parents have done a very good job raising you and uh, we're, we're very glad in the town to have people like you. Uh, so that just got you like a half an hour on your curfew in a couple of years. <laughs> Uh, don't make me have to call in a favor with the police. <laughs> um, so you guys have done a, a great job, and we're, we're lucky to have kids like you in the community. Uh, you guys are the ones that are in 20 years will come sit here and say, I've lived in town my whole life, and uh, hopefully you can be more educated than some of these guys here. So, uh, Meaning me. No offense. <laughs> So you guys do an awesome job. Thank you very much. And uh, like Mary Jo said, post that here. And then when we're done, uh, when you're done here, take it up to the school. So thank you guys very much. Thanks thank so you. much. Is there a way to get you guys over here for a picture? There is. <laughs> yeah. I'll make a deal with you if there's a way to you, for you to get I, Mr. I don't Tony. Do deals. <laughs> it's quid pro quo. This is for me? No, it's for Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Now we'll move on to the consent agenda. Uh, the cons consent agenda items are approve the January 30, February 4, February 12 select board minutes, accept the $2,500 gift from Unibank and $25,000 gift from Friends of Seniors for nutrition and wellness programs at the Senior Center, accept a $100 gift from the Women's Club to support the purchase of books for the Children's Room at the Hopkins Public Library. Approve a parade permit for the annual Global 6K Water Road Race on May 16. A 
approve a parade permit for the 14th annual max performance triathlon on May 9 and September 13. Approve a temporary banner over Main Street from March 16th to March 30 for the Hopkins Women's Club. And approve a sandwich board sign for the Hopkins Women's Club on West Main Street near the Welcome to Hopkins sign in advance of the March 7 event. Would any member like to break any items out for a separate vote? I'd like to break out the uh, Global 6K Water Race. Global 6K Water Race. Yes. Let's give you a second. And anyone else? Nothing? All right. So I will take, uh, make a, or accept the motion to approve all the items on the consent agenda, uh, consent agenda with the exception of the parade permit for the annual Global 6K Water Road Race. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Oh, actually, I'd like to break out number two, um, the, uh, the the gift from Unibank and the Senior Center. Uh, will you accept that as a friendly amendment? Accepted. Okay. <laughs> Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, and it carries. Uh, Mr. Nasrullah. Yeah, I just wanted to take a moment to just say thank you um, for the day rates for, for water. Um, I mentioned it even last year when we were talking about this, but um, I, I did a quick Google search as to the number of uh, deaths that occur from waterborne illnesses, and I was amazed. It was 3.4 million globally die from waterborne illnesses and just providing clean water what a difference we can make in this world if we could just provide clean water so I just want to take my hat off and say thank you for some somebody to actually do something I truly appreciate it and uh, I think it's a wonderful a wonderful project okay um, thank you mr. Nasrullah and I would like to thank Unibank for their generous $2,500 gift and the $25,000 gift from Friends of the Seniors for the nutrition and wellness programs at the Senior Center. I think that's Excellent. absolutely awesome. So um, I will accept a motion now to approve uh, consent agenda item number two and 3A. Um, two and 3A. Yeah, two, two and 3A. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain. It carries. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on. Just a little behind schedule here. Sorry about that. School committee. Uh, Elmwood School Statement of Interest. The Board of Selectmen will consider uh, voting to authorize the superintendent of schools to submit the Massachusetts School Building Authority to the Elmwood um, to the Massachusetts School Building Authority, the Elmwood School Statement of Interest. Dr. Kavanaugh. And Miss Cap, Mrs. Kavanaugh. <laughs> what do you call plural Kavanaugh? It's Kavanaugh. <laughs> I'll refrain. All right. So we are here because once again we would like to submit to the Massachusetts School Building Authority a statement of interest for the Elmwood School. Um, as you can see in your packet, this doesn't guarantee that we will be invited in or reimbursed in any way. Um, but if you are invited into the pipeline, you do have a 270-day opportunity to take all of the next steps. Um, so what we have already had the school committee approve our submission, and so we also need the select board to approve. And in your packet, there is a very, very lengthy motion that needs to be read. Oh, great. <laughs> very That's exciting for me. I'm going to read it. So, board, do you have any more? I mean, we've done this every single year, and it's right. a no-brainer. It, it's <laughs> exactly. Yeah. To the people that are watching out there, the people that are here, it doesn't cost this town one single cent unless we get called in. And if we do get called in, I pray that we do get called in and get accepted to this because we really do need this. So, um, so it begins on the page where it says having convened an open yep. meeting. Mm -hmm. All right. So having convened an open meeting uh, on February 25, 2020, prior to the SOI submission closing date, the select board of Hopkinton 
Massachusetts, in accordance with CHAP, with its charter, bylaws, and ordinances, vote to authorize the superintendent to submit to the Massachusetts School Building Authority the statement of interest form dated February 28, 2020, for the element, Elmwood Elementary School located at 14 Elm Street, which describes and explains the following deficiencies and the priority categories for which an application may be submitted to the Massachusetts School Building Authority in the future. Uh, categories 2, 4, and 7, namely elimination of existing severe overcrowding, prevention of severe overcrowding expected to result from increased enrollments, and replacement of or addition to obsolete buildings in order to provide a full range for the programs consistent with the state and approved local requirements. And hereby further acknowledge, I'm sorry, and hereby, spe hereby further specifically acknowledges that by submitting the state statement of interest form, the Massachusetts School Building Authority in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of an application, the awarding of a grant or any other funding commitment from the Massachusetts School Building Authority, or commits the Hopkins School District to filing an application for funding with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. So moved. Second. Okay. okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain? Carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So, board members, if you would be gracious enough, I, in my haste to try to catch up, um, there was um, something I wanted to talk about at public forum. Um, and I hate to have to do this, but we had another longtime uh, Hopkins and Town employee and resident uh, pass away this, uh, this last week. Uh, his name was Franny Pine. He was on the fire department for a long, long, long time um, as a volunteer. He's just one of the most wonderful guys I've ever met. I happen to be related to him, uh, but he was far more of a friend to me than he was a, uh, a relative. Um, he is one of the guys that kind of, to me, epitomized what Hopkinton used to be. Um, it didn't matter if he was in church or if he was at the liquor store. Uh, as soon as the, the call went out for the fire department for a, a, a fire or an ambulance or an alarm, no matter what he was doing, he'd jump in his old step side pickup truck and, and come on up. And um, whether we got on a truck or we didn't, and we stayed at the station and manned it, um, he was a, a man that I, that not just I, but most in town looked up to uh, for his ability to see the forest uh, through the trees. He had an innate ability to imitate uh, he, the impressions that he, that he had on, uh, on some of our local town people were absolutely spot on that uh, I would say 96% of the audience here probably wouldn't get. Um, but he was, he really was the best. Uh, he had a nickname for me, he called me Dingus. Um, and he, uh, every time that, no matter what we did, he would always, uh, he would come up and he would he would lighten the party and um, I will tell I, I, I'm not going to tell a war, many war stories I'll tell one I had been suspended through the fire department for driving too fast to a call by our fire chief uh, Chief McMillan um, for 30 days so I drove too fast to a call at midnight for so I was suspended for 30 days to drive trucks relegated to the radio. So we had a house fire at Jane Moran's house down on East Main Street. <laughs> so I got in the back of the squad truck. One of the other senior members, I think, was hurt, injured, so he couldn't go on the truck. So he said to get on the back of the truck. So I got in the back of the truck. Uh, now, there's no one driving the truck at this point. There's uh, Bob Slammon, Chief Slammon's dad, an old-timer who you listen to, Franny Pine, and Artie Pine, and myself, and the old H9 We'd back in, we'd throw our air packs on and get ready to go. We knew it was a working fire. So we're all up there, and I'm the only one air packed. I'm all ready to go. So Franny goes, hey, Ted Stone, get in the truck and drive this thing. <laughs> I'm like, ah, uh, ah, uh, he was a lieutenant at the time. I'm like, ah, geez, I, I can't, I'm uh, suspended. He's like, what do you mean you're suspended? I said, I'm not allowed to drive for 30 days. I don't give a hoot. Get in the truck and drive. So I unairpacked and went down. I drove. I didn't even pull into the driveway. And our fire chief came out. He had a little thing. When he got mad at me, he would, and he got mad often at me, he would twist his neck. And he came out, and he started pointing and screaming at me. 
And as I'm sitting there looking at him, taking my medicine, Artie, Franny, and Buzz, which is Chief Slamman's dad, standing right behind the chief, laughing and going like that at me, like, ha ah, ah, ha, we got you in trouble. Uh, and they didn't say it quite like that, uh, but uh, it, was, it was one of those memories that resonated with me. It was, um, he just was an, an awesome, awesome guy, and his, his, uh, his wife, Phyllis, um, you know, the town owes, owes her a debt of gratitude as well as their, ch their children because uh, we lo they lost a lot of family time by his unselfish, unselfishness uh, of just always responding to things for the town. And, and there wouldn't be a town event without him being there. Uh, I'm sorry I meant to do this at public forum. And um, I can see him right now sitting in his living room watching because he never missed one of these meetings. And I'd always get a critique after one of the meetings. And he's, he's sitting on his chair right now with his warm Heineken telling me what a donkey I am for skipping over this. So, um, you know, those are one of the guys, that, that's one of the guys that this town can never ever replace. He just was an awesome guy. And I won't put the chief on, uh, I'd love to put him on the spot, but I know he's probably got similar stories as I, so. Um, so to Franny, uh, we'll miss you, uh, Phyllis and Kevin and Ellie. Um, you, you guys were lucky to have him in your life as long as you did, so. Thank you to, to Franny. Thank you. All right. So I'm still I'm going to smile the whole meeting with knowing the comments that he's throwing at me right now. Uh, Hopkins Running Club parade permit, special temporary alcohol license. Wade. The select board will consider approving a parade permit and special temporary alcohol license application from Wade Marshall on behalf of the Hopkins Running Club for a 10K road race around Lake Whitehall on April 11, 2020, from 6 a.m. till 12 noon. Hmm? So, oh, I thought somebody said something. Um, alcohol will be commenced at 10 a.m. The Hopkin 10K, Hopkin 10K race supports Andy Wellsell Scholarship. Hmm? Nice play on words. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Andy Wellsell Scholarship Fund will begin and end at Victory Field. Alcohol will be supplied and served by, served by TIPS certified servers from Startline Brewing Company. Tickets will be sold in exchange for a beer after IDs are checked and wristbands are attached. Mr. Marshall. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm good. How are you? It doesn't seem like a year has gone by where it you were here. It has not. As, as, uh, as you remember, the one big storm we had this year, snowstorm, was back about uh, a week before the race was supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. So uh, earlier in the week, we uh, talked to the police department we had them drive the course and give us their opinion and they said we don't you know as you know the roads are pretty narrow back there anyway yep. so with the snow banks and the ice conditions uh, we made the choice to cancel the race or to postpone it okay um, and so you know in, in looking at different other different races around the area working with different clubs um, this was the date we came up with which was april 11th okay so this is something that was previously approved that yes. wound up not going off due to weather that's correct Everything else is the same. There's no, so I'd love to sit here and make you squirm, That's but I'm okay. not going to for a hundred times. So um, select board members, do you have any uh, questions for Wade? So is this a, is this a drink and run? So you can start drinking at 10? <laughs> <laughs> well, you could, but the race starts at nine. So you might be a little late for the running part. All right. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve approve the parade permit, permit and special temporary alcohol license for the Hopkins Running Club for the Hopkins 10K road race on April 11, 2020, from 6 a.m. to 12 noon. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Abstain. It carries. Thank you. Thanks, Wade. Thanks. I just I just want to make a uh, not necessarily with you. I just want to make a comment on, on these road races. I mean, we're the town for road races, having the marathon here. And I'm just delighted this year to see that these three major little races are being held in totally different areas of town. We have some on North Mill and East Street. We have the triathlon at the State Park and around the State Park and in Ashland. And then we have your race, which is Cunningham Street and around Wait Wait. Lake Whitehall, and I love it because we're not putting out people in the same areas in the same uh, road races and, and stopping, you know, traffic in, in neighborhoods and, and things like that. And this is just a delightful because the spring is, 
it's a big road race time for us. And to have them spread out around town instead of all in, in one or two places is really wonderful. I, th I thank uh, all of those involved in their mapping out the, the races. It's, it's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Wade. All right. 710 project just because special temporary alcohol license. <coughs> the select board will consider approving a special temporary alcohol license application from Colette Cronin on behalf of project just because for the fourth annual Shamrock Shindig fundraiser to be held on Thursday, March 12 from 7 p.m. till 10 p.m. at St. John's Parish Hall, 20 Church Street, Hopkinton. Estimated number of attendees is 100. Wine and beer will be donated for this event in accordance with Mass General Law Section uh, chapter 138, section 14, TIP certified servers will serve the alcohol. A certificate of liability insurance has been received. Project just because is requesting a free fee waiver for the application fee. Do we have anyone here from there? <coughs> Mrs. Danahy, I, I love this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there. Hello. How are you? Oh, yeah. Um, why don't you tell it? I mean, yeah, go ahead and tell us a little bit about what's going on. I've seen the well, sign in front of your yard. It's so our I, fourth annual. Yep. Um, it's a silent auction uh, meal, uh, uh, corned beef, lasagna, a little bit of everything, but with a shamrock shindig around St. Patrick's Day, that's the theme. Uh, we hope for 100. We have never had 100 yet. So we are being optimistic in our numbers, but it's usually about, I think, 85 the last three years is the most we've had. Okay. Irish entertainment. Yep. Uh, Irish food from our Irish chef from Hopkinton. Really? Yeah. 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 Chris McBall. Oh, yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Excellent. So the food's been awesome every yep. year. Entertainment's good. Yeah. We've got a couple Irish singers coming in. Yep. Local. Ron Remelad's coming back. Oh, nice. Yeah. I think I saw that on Facebook. Yeah. And local <coughs> girls doing Irish step dancing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So, Mr. Kamala, this is the fourth annual. The first three, uh, I'm going to ask, has, have there been any really out of control issues going on? <laughs> no. Steve Slamman's there. He keeps yeah. it all. Yeah. <laughs> all in check. <laughs> so, uh, if the board, does the board have any, any, uh, anything? I was anything? at this event last year, and it was great. I <coughs> really enjoyed it. Um, I think everybody there enjoyed it. There were a lot of people there, and it looked like it. Uh, everybody was having a great time. So, we're hoping you all can attend. It's a great night for a great cause. When is it? Yes. <laughs> March 12th, Thursday. March 12th. Thirsty Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Be plenty of fresca there, I would assume. Plenty, plenty a tab of water. for the husband. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so no other comments. Uh, I will entertain a motion. So actually, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make two motions. The first one to approve this, approve the special temporary alcohol license for a project just because for the show <laughs> on March 12, 2020 from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. at St. John's Parish Hall, 20 Church Street. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? Carries. And Thanks, I'd guys. also like to make a motion for a fee waiver for the project just because application. Second. Okay. No further uh, further discussion? Nope. Good. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? It carries. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, board and committee appointments. Select board will consider appointments to the following committee, the Sustainable Green Committee and the Trail Coordination and Management. Uh, Mary Jo, I'm going to let you take this one. <laughs> well, is, uh, those of you who are here and have put in your application for the Sustainable Green Committee, would you all please stand up? And would you state your name? <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to make a motion that we <laughs> appoint Donald Sutherland, Jeff Rowland, Allison LaFleury. LaFleur. LaFleur, okay. Mina? Kashi. Okay, Andrew Hayes, Amy Groves, Paul Gallagher, Renee Dean, Peggy Barton, and Rebecca Hoffman as the newest members of this reinvented or, or brought back committee, the 
Please constituted. <laughs> okay. And I'm so glad that you're, that this committee is being revived and brought back. It, I think it's great. There's a motion. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? Carries. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank Welcome you. Aboard. <laughs> Trail and Coordination Management. The Conservation Commission has recommended the appointment of Jamie Ronka as its designee to the Trail Coordination and Management Committee. Ms. Ronka would move from an at-large position on the TCMC to the Conservation Commission representative position, and a vacancy will cre be created at the at-large position. Is uh, Jamie here? Okay. I don't see it, but... Uh, so, Mr. Gattino. Uh, I'd uh, like to make a motion to appoint Jamie Ronka as the Conservation Commission designee on the Trail Coordination and Management Committee, moving from an at-large position with the term expiring 6-30-2021. Is there Seven. anyone here from the Conservation Commission? I have it seconded. Okay. Nope. There aren't. Uh, any further discussion? <clears throat> well, I had a question. If, if she's representing the Conservation Commission on the Trails Coordination Management Committee, but she's not a member of the Conservation Commission. All I want to do is know how is she planning on reporting to the Conservation Commission. Or they can have a designated. Hmm? You can appoint somebody. Yes, I know you yeah. can. But you still should be. It has to be a method of, of getting back the information from one committee to the other. That's all. Through the chair, we expect that she will provide updates to the Conservation Commission at open public meetings. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any further conversation? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? It carries. Good. Uh, select Board FY21 Comprehensive Budget. The Select Board will review the FY21, I'm sorry, 2021 Comprehensive Budget. Mr. Kamala. Um, as you may know, uh, over the past several weeks, at the direction of the Select Board, uh, the Budget Advisory Group uh, has continued to meet weekly to work on the budget, with additional and more frequent staff-level meetings between the school department and town hall. We are continuing to make progress in refining our estimates of revenues and in finding savings on the town side of the expense budget. My comments this evening follow up on our sessions from January 21st when the budget was submitted to the Select Board, January 30th, when the Select Board reviewed the operating budget with town departments, and February 4th, when you reviewed the capital budget requests. Our budget calendar calls for the Select Board to adopt and submit a firmed up proposals for Appropriations Committee review at your March 10th meeting, which is the following meeting. Tonight, we are seeking your guidance so that staff can develop a document for the March 10th meeting that reflects your policy priorities. As we have stated before, our challenge in developing a path forward, uh, this is after the adjustments to both the town side and the school side of the budget, um, for, and this was done in multiple public meetings, both by the school committee as well as uh, the meetings that I've referenced in the select board. Our current budget funds the school at $1,382,000 below the school budget request, and approximately uh, $380,000 on the town side. We have been working to close that gap. As we have discussed at previous meetings, the best news we have received is reflected in the governor's budget, which contained both a significant increase in expected state aid and a modest reduction in the charges the town is assessed by the state for cooperative programs. The net impact of those changes improves our budget situation by approximately $480,000. For tonight's discussion, we will factor in this increase, which has not been approved by the legislature. In the event the final state aid is below the expected level, additional expense reductions or revenue increases will be needed. 
If we start by applying all the new state aid to support increased school spending, we are still well below the school request. And to address this issue, I'm suggesting thematic areas the board's guidance could focus on. These include the following. Number one is the overlay account adjustment. Number two, review over time with the respective departments that have submitted requests for overtime. Number three, do a closer review of the supplies and expense budgets across all town budgets. Also, on the school side, I would invite the schools to collaborate on limited reductions to the last topmost layer of enhancements included in the school department budgets those most removed from the student educational experience. Again, I want to underscore that, those most removed from the student educational experience. After deciding on budgetary adjustments along these lines, we will still be, we will still be far short of the amount needed to fund the school budget request. Two ideas come to mind for filling that remaining gap. The first option is to apply funding for this purpose from the $831,000 of anticipated receipts currently due under the Legacy Farms Host Community Agreement. This idea has been discussed by the Budget Advisory Committee or group, and I believe there is support for it from the school side of the enterprise. On the plus side, this approach Number one, provide substantially all of the many requests for increased funding from the school department and provides for all of the requests that directly touch the learning experience. Number two, it provides an FY21 solution that does not require a proposition two and a half override. Number three, it uses the host community agreement money for exactly its intended purpose, bridging the cost gaps caused by student enrollment increases way in advance before the town receives the generated new growth. And finally, it could provide a potentially workable path to FY22 if the new, more aggressive enrollment estimates developed for the school department turn out to be much higher than the actual FY22 enrollment. On the negative side, this approach would have us paying for over a million dollars of recurring costs in our operating budget from one-time funding sources, including free cash and the host community agreement. Funding recurring costs, like salaries for new hires, from one-time sources is contrary to the guidance in the financial management policies which have been adopted by the town. Those policies specifically call for us to support ongoing expenses with ongoing revenue streams whenever possible which is a financial best practice. Under this option, we will be challenged to find a recurring source of funding for this large amount of recurring need in FY22, along with funding for whatever additional needs arise next year. What is the second option? The second option would be to request a proposition to and a half override to fund the recommended spending level entirely with recurring sources of funding, consistent with the town's financial management policies and with best practices. On the plus side, this approach also provides almost all of the many requests for increased funding from the school department and provides for all of the requests that directly touch the student learning experience. It would also solve this year's problem this year, rather than putting it off to next year. And it is an approach that would be consistent with our financial management policy and the fiscal stewardship that has earned the town a AAA bond rating. Additionally, this approach would free up one-time money to either directly fund some capital projects we had planned to bond or to bolster our stabilization fund which would enhance our financial strength and credit worthiness. Further, this approach would leave all the legacy farms HACA 
funding available to address future one-time education costs related to growth. And we all know we will have those costs in the future. On the negative side, this option requires a proposition two and a half override this year and creates an additional recurring tax burden for taxpayers even though one-time funding is available for at least this year. Again, I'm inviting your feedback and discussion on the idea of an additional round of budget adjustments on both the town and the school sites and on filling the final gap amount with either one-time funding we have available or through an override. Whether you provide the feedback tonight or after this meeting, I would appreciate your input in time for us to prepare for the March 10th meeting so that you can send a package to the Appropriations Committee at that time. Again, the meetings of the Budget Advisory Committee are continuing and at staff level the superintendent, the school business manager, the CFO and myself are continuing to meet regularly to try and find a solution to the budget gap. Okay, so that was a report. We don't need to have back and forth on that, correct? Correct, unless if the board has any specific comments or suggestions. Um, yeah, I'd like to offer a comment. <laughs> I think I think tapping the host community agreement money right now, as you as you pointed out, really kind of uh, it, it doesn't address the future. And I think what we really need to do is take a comprehensive look at how are we going to continue forward without doing budget overrides, without tap you know looking for additional sources of, of funding. Um, so. My feedback would be to go through another round of seeing where can we trim expenses and um, and how can we go forward that way. Uh, I'm, I'm, I wholeheartedly support the school and the, the, the budget that the school has, uh, has proposed, but I think you know we have to look at long-term sustainability financially and um, just tapping the, tapping the money that you know we have in the back there doesn't seem like a uh, financially responsible thing to be doing and we've always to do the chair for me yeah and we've always said we, we don't like using uh, one-time funding for uh, uh, for these for the sustaining budget um, you know but the you know the other side is 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 tough to have a, have an override but and, but uh, if this if there's actually some way to structure the budget so that this extra money uh, that we're throwing in there isn't carried over for, for the next year and, and the following year and the following year. You know, if we can look at look at that, the way we can structure, the way we pay for some of these things, so we're not blowing up the entire budget by doing override. But, you know, but again, having an override is a, is a way for the townspeople to actually have a voice, and for that, and you know, that's the the. the it, it gives total transparency because right now we're just talking numbers and numbers and people can't see the spreadsheets that we're looking at and, and the breakdowns but you know at town meeting people can actually look and see you know what we're the, the, the job that we're doing and, and, and have some input on it um, both are tough and, and I know you're in a tough position trying to ask people to cut their budgets and you know what do you really need what's a need and what's a want um, and, and at this point, you know, we are right, probably down to the bones, and we are cutting, cutting deep, uh, cutting deeply. Uh, but uh, we should really try and do uh, the best we can at, at, uh, at the to Mr. Nasrullah's point of, of, of another round, if, if at all possible. And then uh, I think that uh, we uh, we bring it to the townspeople. Good. <coughs> all right. Thank you, Mr. Kamala. Do you need anything? No. Do you have anything, Mary? Well, I just I just wanted to ask all of those who are putting in for capital improvements if there's anything they can take off and wait another year or so. Please do it and do it now because the school the school does come. The high school will be done 
the borrowing for the high school will be done in the next two years and it will open up some money for borrowing and um, if the, the capital improvements things can be put off and, and borrowed in a year or two please look at it and uh, let us know so we can make an adjustment thank you okay. good mr. Camaro thank you very much thank you uh, so now we will go to the what do we go to the treasurer's report Select board will receive a quarterly deposits and investment report from the town treasurer slash collector. Good evening. How are you? How are you? Good, thank you. Thank you for your time this evening. Thank I'm here tonight yours. to provide an update on the town's deposits and investments for the prior quarter ending December 31st, 2019. Overall, at the end of the quarter, the town had $47.9 million invested and on deposit. Cash deposits within the general fund totaled $34 million, an increase of $1.25 million over the prior quarter. Interest earned on these deposits was $152,000, with an average earned annual interest rate of 1.89%. The largest deposit we had was with the Massachusetts Municipal Depositories Trust's Money Market Fund, or MMDT, which provides our highest return opportunity. For Massachusetts general law, the general fund assets are to be invested with the priority of achieving safety, liquidity, and yield in that order. Deposits outside of the general fund include trust funds, performance bonds, parks and recreation fund funds, and student activity funds, which total $3.19 million, with interest rates varying due to size and activity, ranging from 0.24 to 1.97%. Recently, we have seen the Federal Reserve maintaining lower interest rates. In order to adjust for that, we have closed two of the accounts on this report and moved those funds into the MMDT Money Market Fund in order to achieve a higher yield on the town's deposits. The town's investments are managed by Bartholomew Investments. They are a Worcester firm that supports many Massachusetts municipalities. And those funds are segregated into two separate accounts, the Trust and Stabilization Funds and the other Post-Employee Benefits Funds which is OPEB. The trust and stabilization funds investments are bound by law to invest only in the Massachusetts legal list of investments. Continued due, due diligence by the finance team has confirmed that the town is compliant with this requirement. Over the quarter, these investments gained an annualized rate of 8.07% in value. The asset allocation ratio of these investments of 32% equities and 68% fixed income represent a conservative risk strategy geared toward maintaining the availability of funds should the need arise while also gaining a moderate investment exposure for long-term gains. The OPEB investment fund is not bound by the Massachusetts legal list of investments and as such has uh, access to a broader variety of investment interest instruments. Additionally, due to the less liquid and longer term requirements of these assets, the fund is invested with an asset allocation weight of 52% equities, 16% alternative investments, and 32% fixed income. Employing this moderate investment strategy yielding, yielded a 15.64% annualized return over the quarter by gaining a larger exposure to equities while maintaining a balanced investment in fixed income products to safeguard against market downturns. In the coming months, the finance team will be working to update our risk profile and investment policy, in which we will document updated investment policies and procedures in order to maintain the highest standard of care for the town's investments and deposits, as well as to ensure that we are financially prepared for the future. And that is all I have for you this evening. Be happy to take any questions. Good sheets. Do you know, have anything? No, I'm, I'm, I'm good. At, uh, I'm good. I, I like some of the holdings. <laughs> Your friend? Good? I'm good. Thank you. There you go. It's a very extensive yeah. report. Excellent. Nice work. Mm -hmm. Makes me glad I'm a nurse and didn't go uh, to school. <laughs> 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 you can choose the heck out of it. Someone's got to do it. Okay. Well, well, one, one quick thing. <coughs> sure. Um, we all saw what happened the past two days in the market. Um, I'm assuming that these are all uh, safer and not subject to such drastic fluctuations. Well, but, this, uh, is, this is the first bite. You know, how do we kind of stand as far as uh, mm -hmm. 
to share. Yeah, so, so the, same, the same thing I said above for the priority of, of, of investment with safety, liquidity, and yield. That goes for both the cash deposits, but also the investments as well. Um, specifically with the stabilization funds and the trust funds, which are funds that we may need more immediate in the future in case something arises. Those are um, invested much more conservatively. And then with the OPEB funds, we're looking further in the distance, trying to fund our OPEB liability. Um, so we have the opportunity there to go a little more aggressive. But still, it's a very balanced investment profile across both accounts. Excellent. Thank you. And you have Coke and Pepsi. Correct. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> In, in fact, if I may, through the chair, um, a couple of things. I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, the CFO, Tim O'Leary, uh, and the treasurer, um, uh, uh, Chris. And here's why I'm thanking them. Um, for many years, we have had the goal of uh, improving our financial transparency by making such reports uh, public. Uh, not only is this report being shared with the select board, but it's going, also going to be posted on the town website. If any residents have any questions, please feel free to call Tim O'Leary or, or Chris. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <coughs> Annual town meeting articles. Mr. Kamau. Yes, uh, included in your packet is the information identifying Zero Hayward Street as well as Zero Princeton Street uh, Road is the two parcels that are tentatively uh, on the annual town meeting uh, through the efforts of the Assistant Town Manager Elaine. Uh, we reached out to town boards and committees, uh, sought their uh, input on the um, the idea of the town disposing of these two properties, uh, the feedback that we received uh, was pretty loud and clear. Uh, various town departments indicated that the town should hold on to these properties. Uh, and so this is the recommendation that we're bringing to the select board. Uh, we also uh, have been in conversations with one of the property owners who is uh, strongly interested in having the town dispose of this parcel, and I believe they're here tonight to state their case. Through the chair. Come on up. Hey there. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? We're better. <laughs> so you're the Hayward Street, correct? That is correct, sir. You guys were up here with a puddle issue. Were, weren't you up here before last no. year? No. Someone else. All right. So <clears throat> you have a piece of property on uh, Hayward Street, across the street from Sandy Beach and the sewer pump station, um, it's about 8,700 square feet, and it's entirely within the buffer zone. Um, Parks and Rec Commission voted in 2019 that it has no present or future operational. Just reading out loud. <coughs> A memo dis was distributed to several town departments and boards on 12-16-19. CONCOM and Conservation Administrator expressed the need to retain the parcel for storm water, storm water management purposes, reference previous flooding problems in this area, and the potential need for additional storm water management actions in this location due to climate change impacts. CONCOM recommended that the town consider de uh, delegating management of the entire parcel to the CONCOM. DPW Director recommended remain, uh, retaining it because of the town drainage infrastructure there and offered that perhaps the parcel could be divided with a portion sold. And the Affordable Housing Trust Fund Board stated it did not have an interest in the lot. The abutters whose request began the process are still interested in purchasing the property. So our options are proceed with the article to dispose of property, parks and rec and or select board declaration of surplus, town meeting and vote Town meeting vote and Article 97 process if needed, eventual sale of lot via RFP process, or to uh, remove the article from the warrant, retain ownership. So, why don't you guys tell us a little bit about what's going on? So, we've been living at the home for about seven years now. Um, we've got three small children. Uh, the lot in, directly in front of our property is uh, an unkept lot there's uh, broken concrete there weeds are coming through it um, our hope and goal is to then eventually obtain the property so that we can fix it up um, 
oftentimes neighbors come by and ask, you know, if we're ever going to fix it up, and we have to tell them that it's it's uh, not ours. Yeah. So that will be our ultimate goal. Um, ideally, you know, there's a large bit of property there. We have no interest in the entire thing because um, there is that culvert located on the property as well. Understanding that you all you all would need to maintain access to it or whatnot. Um, so subdividing the, the the parcel would be what I would suggest and, and propose uh, be done. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at the map, and this is the parcel. Do you live on this side of the parcel or on this side? Uh -huh. We're right there. Where that's, you are now. That's, that's us. Exactly. So this, okay. this lot exactly is directly out of yeah. our front door. No, I'm sorry? This lot is directly our front door, our home, uh, the front of our home. So there's no space between our front door and this lot. So our children walk out to where people park their car. Um, you know, it, it's not safe. We don't want a parking, you know, people parking in front of our home like that. There is, there is no divide between our house and this. Um, and we're not wanting to do anything but own it so that we can maintain it and greenify it, but we want to be able to, to do that and make it safe for our children to go outside and stuff. So is your, I mean, just to throw out a name, is your house the Vogel's house? Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. okay. If, I, if I may do the check. You know, if, if CONCOM is, is worried about stormwater um, and uh, stormwater management and such, you know, if, if, if they clear it and make it better, then, then there will be better infiltration. It's clear. Yeah, because right now there is, there, it's hard to tell because there's just so much, the concrete and the, the pavement there is, is, is so broken up. Um, there are sections of it that are, are impervious, uh, where in which the stormwater would directly run off of it. Uh, again, our goal was to then remove all that, that debris, um, throw down some, some soil, some wildflowers, whatnot, and just make it look more presentable. Our concern is that if we don't, if, if uh, we spoke to the conservation committee because we wanted to, you know, be partnerships with them, but if if it's uh, if we don't own it, then we won't be able to maintain it and keep it up. And so they had said, well, maybe we could have the DPW come and mow it once a year. Yeah. I don't yeah. want a risk <laughs> of ticks and the danger. You know, I mean, we, it, again, our children literally walk out this door and, and go to the beach and enjoy Sandy Beach and the lake. So we, it's a very unique property. It's a really odd property line. And it really does look like it is truly just an extension of our home. And we just want to keep it safe like that. Mr. Kamala. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, actually, I was going to ask Mr. Kamala. Um, would we be able to grant them an easement to maintain the property? Is that something that we could do rather than dispose of it? Because I would like to maintain some um, some ownership. We basically, you know, it has the the drainage characteristics. It acts as a buffer to you know to the lake. Mm -hmm. If we were to grant an easement and kind of say, here's what we're going to do. How about a 100-year lease or something like that? Well, no. We want to, I think we want to, well, yeah, what I want, what I'm thing. thinking is I want to, I want to maintain the characteristics of, or the functions <laughs> of the, not the characteristics. Right, no, no, not, characteristics, that's what we're trying to fix. The functions that were, that the, the conservation and, and, you know, all the other town departments are, are, are saying it functions as. So <coughs> maintain that but allow it to be maintained so it looks decent. I, I completely understand. I mean, looking at it, it that's your front yard. Yeah. Um, so I completely hear where you're coming from, but at the same time, I think that there may be a happy middle ground mm -hmm. to, uh, to maintain the functions that we, we need it to. Sure. Yeah. Um, Is this he it through the chain. I, I think what I'm hearing tonight is perhaps um, some additional clarification on the neighbor's intent. Um, one way forward would be to pursue what you're saying, have a sit down with town departments, gain a clear understanding of how the town believes that this particular parcel will help in addressing the stormwater management issues in that area and see if there's a way in incorporating your maintenance concerns into the town solution. So, an idea that I had, it, based on our 
So I don't know what our stance is on selling town land to private people. I don't know if, if we make it a habit of doing that or not. Yeah. A butters. We, we offer it to a butters. Okay. So we just heard that we were a million and a half or better <coughs> in the hole this year. If we could sell these guys that piece of property for $141,000. Oh, That's a tight round. That, that's a tight round. <laughs> it has to be. <laughs> they have a placeholder. Yeah. The, yeah. Pro the other uh, property on this is like much bigger than ours and is for like $4,000. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's not going to help us much. That's not so we're hoping that the database is wrong. <laughs> oh, that's what it said on ours, too. I think it's, it's got water yeah. on it, too. So, Water on it? No, there's, there's no, uh, no, no utilities. I mean, there's the this, this stream, but like the DPW said, what we're hoping to is break it up. We only want what's directly immediately, directly in, front of, in front of our home. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want the other we're side of the stream. So I, I don't know. I'm looking at this thing and it says it's it does, but $141,000. So for $141,000, I'm going to override the board and say you can buy it. No, I'm, I'm hoping that's incredibly wrong because <laughs> it's... <laughs> exactly, yeah. Through the chair, it, this is also Article 97 land. Am I correct? Um, so that's going to actually require that we go to the legislature, uh, Massachusetts legislature, and get a two-thirds majority in order to be able to dispose of it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm looking at something that's a little, uh, yeah. a little less onerous on the part of the town. This is the area where they're having culvert problems and things, too, isn't it? it, is it? Exactly. And, yeah. and also, given that um, we, as a community, now have to address the new stormwater management uh, requirements, I can understand why both conservation and DPW are opposed to the town disposing of the parcel. However, I think as has been suggested, now that there's a clear understanding of your intent, let's see whether the solution that the town has for stormwater management in the area can incorporate your sure. appearance concerns. Okay. If I may, one more, one more thing, uh, comment to the chair. Yeah. And, and if the town does want to retain it, let's keep it up. You know, let's not, let's not make the... the they have the worst property around Sandy Beach be the town property. And I think the, the town property should be one of the best ones because we definitely have the largest and best crews available to uh, to keep it up. Uh, that it's it's sort of shameful that it's the entrance to Sandy Beach and it's the uh, the ugliest property. So no matter how it comes out, I just I hope that the that we can um, work well as a town and and, and uh, put our best foot forward. Don't park any tanks on it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, That's the area where the tanks are. I know, I know where it is. <laughs> I like the leasing idea, leasing a small no. portion of it yeah, no, okay. to these no. people. If we could leasing would also be a disposition of land out. That's yeah. the problem. That makes yeah, sense. Same thing. Right. Yeah. So same thing. Same thing. Yeah. 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 97 was on the yeah. bottom. Next one. I didn't see it. Yeah, yeah. What are we doing? We are requesting the board remove the article from the warrant and allow town staff through the town manager's office to coordinate um, efforts between the town departments concerned about uh, stormwater management um, and uh, the, the neighbors who are interested in uh, ensuring that the, um, the, the, the parcel is, is, is kept so where... you need a motion from us to remove it? Please. Okay, good with that? Yeah. 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 Okay, Mr. Okay. Yeah. I'll so make the motion to uh, remove... Uh, well, that I guess it, it's that's only part of what part of well, we moved the zero Haywood Street from the from the article because there's another property on there also. So I don't want to say remove the article. So moved. No, uh, second, sorry. <laughs> Any further discussion from the board? Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain. Carried. Thanks, guys. Thank you. And Mr. Kamala, what's the second part of this? Uh, mm -hmm. Zero Princeton Road. Oh, yes. Yeah. Nice. A piece of landlocked property um, that's adjacent to other land owned by the town. Um, similarly, Anna Butter has requested to acquire it. Uh, right now it's under the jurisdiction of the select board, so it's not an Article 97 property. Uh, but the CONCOM would like it to be. So their recommendation is that it be retained and they would like to take management responsibility of this piece and the surrounding town pieces as a buffer to the lake and to deal with uh, stormwater Recharge and similar issues. Elaine, where's uh, Princeton Road? So it doesn't it's exist. It's not there. It's yeah. been rescinded. But it's behind, um, let's see. Off the lake? Yeah. It's off a lake. Well, the lake is over here. Which it, one? It, it's Mount Okay. And 
the thing is, this is the property we are looking at, and they have access, but there's no frontage, so they, it can't be built on. Somebody else was oh, looking at that, that okay. property before. It's a paper, but without this road, which was rescinded at town meeting, yeah. all these properties belong to the town. They can combine them all into one large parcel that in the future conservation makes a really good piece of conservation land. Okay. Mr. Kamal, what's your uh, suggestion on this? That the, we recommend the board remove the adjective from the town meeting warrant. You guys good with that? Yes. Okay. So I'll take a motion. Uh, I move that we remove uh, zero Princeton from the town warrant article. Okay. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Very one, one quick one. Who put this one on the on the warrant? Oh. Did, did people get like signatures or something? Did I just no. make sure that we're not over? No, we we, we, we just, yes, okay. yes, the Senate board did. This was based on the inquiries made by the abattis. Okay. No further discussion. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Abstain. Thank you. Do we need another motion to transfer um, jurisdiction of this to the? Who wanted it? Uh, conservation wanted it? No, not at this point. No, no, no. Okay, we have no. not talked yeah. about it on the agenda. Yeah. All right, Tom Manager report. <coughs> Mr. Kamala. Yeah, through the chair, um, two items. The first is Main Street Corridor Project. In your no, packet, <laughs> we included two sample letters for the offer of just compensation. Uh, this is in relation to the easements that are required for the Main Street Corridor project. We offered the two options um, in the following manner. The first letter includes a donation, an option to donate. We do understand that in previous meetings, uh, member Brian Hare stated strongly that he was opposed to uh, the donation option. However, we are recognizing that there are entities that had already offered to donate their properties, and that's why we included that option. The other option, uh, put, put simply, does not include uh, a donation. So my request is uh, for the board's guidance in terms of which letter do we send out. So you want, you want to, there's one of two letters. There's one that has an option for someone to donate, yes, and one that does not have an option for someone. Correct. Well, I think I I would think that we would want to have an option for someone to donate if, if right. they want to donate. We if someone wants to donate their land. Does it make sense to? Yes, I, I agree. I think, um, and it says it's an option to donate, um, but they could, they have the option to accept just compensation as well. So I, I don't. I mean, if somebody wants yeah. to give it to us, I don't think we. We should be forced to pay. Yeah, we're forced to. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I would entertain a motion to. Um, Are we all to agreement? leave the? Yeah. Where you go? You in agreement? Yes. Yeah. I've done these in other towns, and they always have an option to donate. So. Uh, I guess we would make a motion to send that letter out, including the option for someone to donate their property. Okay. So moved. Great. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? No. Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain? Carries? Yeah. The second request in relation to the Main Street Corridor through the chair is to request the board to set the compensation budget at $1.6 million. Compensation budget at $1.6 million. Yeah. And it that, just that number was determined by how? Um, we, have we have concluded the appraisal process, submitted the appraisal reports to MassDOT. MassDOT has certified those reports as complying with the MassDOT requirements, and we're ready to provide the information to the property owners now. Okay. Still move. So I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to establish the aggregate amount of just compensation that will be offered to the affected property owners at $1.6 million. Okay. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? Carries? Mr. Kamala? The next issue is the policy review of the marijuana testing laboratories and marijuana research facilities policy. This is a document that we shared with the board and the public at your last meeting. 
Uh, we have not received any additional comments. Uh, we are seeking the board's uh, approval of the policy so that we can implement it going forward. Okay. Uh, the chair. Yeah. Um, so at the last meeting, I had uh, given a couple thoughts that I had. Mm. One was uh, notification to abutters of the community meeting. And currently we have um, abutters within 300 feet of a closed facility. And I was suggesting we have 500 feet, just to give uh, 300 feet is really not a lot of space. And if uh, anyone is living, I would think, within 500 feet, that's, uh, that's enough. That would be a little more encompassing to, uh, to allow more community input. The idea behind these community meetings is, is to get a feel for the community and what, what people living directly around it think. So I would suggest that we increase the, the radius of um, notification to abutters of the community meeting to be 500 feet. Um, and I would, I don't think it needs to be in the policy, but I think uh, maybe when we're negotiating those community agreements that we would want to have limits on how much product that they're allowed to have on site. Because we heard directly from the uh, proponent that they do not need to have large quantities of, of marijuana on site. So uh, I, would, I wouldn't mind it being in a policy that we have a limit, but um, if we don't want to go that route, then at least use the, the host community agreement to address that. Um, if I may through the chair, one of the things that I want to be careful of, even though you're the one that said we should have uh, marijuana testing, is if there's another another testing facility comes in and they look at ours and say, oh, they have the maximum they can have is a, a, a few grams, and this is a, this is a, a facility that might be testing potencies and, and, and that for, for many other, for, for many companies. You know, and I think we should probably attach it to, to a level of security that they have there if there's, you know, um, and, and match it to that, but not to, not to make strict Strict numbers because I don't want you know we have a, we have a million open a million square feet of open space up on South Street. I want to make sure right. that uh, that we can we don't. Uh, I understand, but I think that we don't need to have like multiple pounds of it. I mean, we, we were we were told that he only needs. A oh, well, that was just one. No, no, that was, that was just one company. Right. But I want to make sure uh, if there's another company that comes in and they and they have they have like ten or twenty grams from from a hundred different companies that it adds up to. To that number that we're not that, that that goes over, and then they say, "Well, we're going to go to Southboro instead." Hmm. You know, but if they have security on hand and they have, uh, you know, it, it, and all that, I think that that so we should that that's, should be part of the discussion. I mean, I I, yeah. I don't have an issue with your. Okay. I don't have an issue with that. I think uh, we, yeah. we we could tie it to security exactly. too. Exactly. That, that would work fine for me. Okay. <laughs> I just don't want it to be an attractive nuisance for. People just yeah. want to try to come in and, and, right. and rob. Yeah, we, have jewelry store, we have jewelry stores too yeah. in town. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Elaine, we have a bylaw already on the radius of a buyers for alcohol, alcohol businesses and, and all of that, including churches and schools within so many feet. Is that 500 feet? Not sure mm -hmm. it is for alcohol. No. But I know for, for every spe any special permit, it's, it's, it's 300 feet. And we have a couple instances where it's uh, wider, for example, for a drive through windows, it's a bigger radius. So at certain times, the community has decided that a wider radius is wider. I know it's 300 feet, but then it's 300 feet. But churches and schools beyond 300 are included in that sometimes, depending on what the... I don't, I don't remember so, that from Plenty Board. I think part of the reason I suggest that we widen the, the radius is I think as a whole, Hopkinton voted overwhelmingly not to allow dispensaries or anything to right. do with recreational marijuana. And, um, and I want to respect the will of the people. Um, I think even when it came to the, to the vote on whether or not Massachusetts should legalize it, I think Hopkinton said no, we should not. And, and we had so, people saying what people were saying, two miles. And we were, yeah, talking, we were yeah. trying to bring it up. We were just like, yeah. well, I mean, while my personal views may differ, I think that uh, our jobs here is to represent the will of the people. Yeah. The people have spoken. And so at least give them an opportunity, give more people an opportunity to speak. And right now, this looks like it's only going up on South Street. Yeah. In that area but anyway. All that said, I am very much in favor 
of bringing this company in. Um, I think that it's a it's a good company. I think they've demonstrated uh, security measures, and I think it's I think there's nothing wrong with this. But um, in representing the people, I think we should also be mindful yeah. of, of who who gets to know what's coming. Yep. Great. Good. Good deal. Violent agreement. <laughs> so good. <laughs> So that's it for the town manager's report, right? Yes. So you want to and, and yes, I wanted, wanted to clarify that uh, we, we did look into <coughs> the, the apparent notification radius requirement. And what town council clarified to us was that, yes, the law does reference the 500 feet requirement. However, the regulations that were put forth do not. Town council still said to us that it's it's up to the town to decide which which radius it would prefer. So if, right. Yeah, so we can be more restrictive yes. than what the state allows. Yep. And I, I I would suggest that uh, we, we would be just given the votes that this town has, has taken. Okay. So since it's that we use five hundred feet. Yep. Okay. Do we all? I mean, yes. just the rest of my board agree? Yes. Katina. Sure. Yes. Good. Okay, so but, yeah, that, right? uh, no, I, I think we. I think we need a motion. I think we're supposed to motion to accept motion the to, yeah, to approve the select board policy entitled marijuana testing laboratories and marijuana research facilities process and host community agreement, and, and modif yeah, and adding to that uh, a five hundred foot radius. Yeah. Okay. But a notification. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And second. second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain. Very good. Liaison reports. Um, Mr. Nashville. Um, no, I just have one item. It's the uh, Hopkinton Cultural Council is having their annual shindig uh, March 1st. Katino. Uh, I don't have any this year, this week. Really? <laughs> I know. Move it on. It's very <laughs> <different. laughs> good. I was at the assessor's meeting. Um, Adam Monroe joined me to uh, meet the board and and we had a, a discussion on, on the stipend thing, and it, the reason it came up was because it's new with the Department of Revenue, and the Department of Revenue felt that because they insist that the assessors go to school and take these courses that they'd be basically reimbursed for them. And the town pays for them anyway, so they, the article is in. They may or may not rescind it. Uh, but it's okay. Cool. I mean, it's they okay. kind of decided that it, it's okay either way. They won't get it. They will. They will do whatever the town is doing okay. and decides for stipends. Good. Okay. And I don't have any. So, uh, future board agenda items. Anybody? Obviously, we're going to stay uh, up to date on all the budget stuff. Yeah. Major quarter stuff. Yeah, the rest of the warrant articles, make sure that we get the, the wording. Yep. So, Mr. Catino, if you would work your magic on the last item of our agenda. Meeting to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, meeting to adjourn. Second. All right. Be Any further board discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstaining carries. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Hope everything's good in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> so much meetings with a sick and crazy